Hi everybody. Today we're going to try and stay calm as we talk about forces and stresses. So first of all, we're just going to recall what we mean by strong or strength. Then we're going to learn about the four basic forces, be able to apply them to given structures and give examples in the real world. And then we're going to consider how to really improve material properties with our friends, the composites. So when we looked at material properties in the other video that I'll link to, one of the topics we looked at was strength or things being strong. So forces can cause materials to break or change shape, right, with the application of force. So if you were to hit it, for instance, we say they are strong if they can withstand these forces. So the examples that we looked at there is tug of war rope, a bridge resisting compression, surfboard on the waves or a Kevlar motorcycle jacket. So when we talk about strength, we're talking about stress, right? So stress is the force per unit area. Okay. Force per unit area. And that's Newton's per meter squared. Okay. So for instance, the example I like to come to, which might seem a little odd, is if you were giving CPR, right? If you've practiced CPR before, you don't just put both hands splayed out across the person's chest that you're trying to help. What you do is you put one hand over the top of the other and you're putting all your force down on just to the heel of one of your palms in order to actually give proper CPR, right? So it's the force per unit area. So if material can withstand a stress, it's strong. It has strength. So we're going to look at a few types of force to understand. So the first one we're going to look at is compression or if it has compressive strength. Then we're going to look at tension or tensile strength, shear or shear strength. And then we're also going to have a look at bending as well, which is a subcategory of shear and then torsion or torsional strength. So let's start with the easiest one first of all. So compression is the force needed to squash an object by pushing. And we'll look at it in a minute, but this is in opposition to tension. So uh, a uh, suspension bridge pylon has compressive strength right through. So the pylon is the bit that goes up and down. So do bricks in a wall, right, for similar reasons. And if you were to sit down on a chair, that chair has compressive strength. It's holding you up. And of course, we know what happens if we don't have enough compressive strength and the building will fall down. <laughs> so uh, here I have included for us a few GIFs and I'm just going to allow them to circulate around. <laughs> and if you want to uh, rewind the video and watch each one, you obviously can. I've included the link to the Hydraulic Press YouTube channel and that is literally all they do. So uh, good on them. <laughs> Now I've included for you this short, excellent video, um, which I'd like you to pause and watch now. This is a really good example of compressive strength, but rather than a vertical compression, like with the hydraulic press, this is very much a horizontal compression. And what it's doing is comparing plywood with oriented strand board. Give that one a watch. So now let's talk about tension. So something has tensile strength or tensile forces. So this is the force needed to stretch an object by pulling. If you've ever um, tuned a guitar or a banjo or ukulele or a piano, you'll know that you have to pull the wire until it's until it's fairly taut and that will change the sound. OK, so in, in the same kind of way, let's apply it. We can think about a tug of war rope, a trampoline spring right, being pulled outwards. Of course, it will retract um, itself, but being pulled out and suspension bridge cables. So we talked about the pylons having compressive strength and now the cables having tensional strength or tensile strength. So this next video that I have for you is a really good one. This chap is testing the uh, cable tension for a truck and he sets it up on this rig and uh, wants to see which of them is going to be safest when it breaks. So uh, I think it might the, out the outcome might surprise you. So give that one a watch. And now for another video, it's a video heavy one today. Um, I would like you to please watch at least the first four minutes, although you could watch the whole video if you want. It's not very long. 
Now, this is all about reinforced concrete. Now, some people might go, what? That sounds really dull, but it's actually fascinating. So uh, it's really, um, it's one of the best uh, examples of a composite that we have because it can resist both compressive and tensional forces. So stop the video and give this one a watch. Now let's talk about shear forces or shearing forces. Now, when we talk about shearing, this is often what people comes to uh, comes to mind, sort of shearing a sheep, and it's not really like this, but it's obviously similar root of of the word. So this is uh, acting in opposition to or, or past uh, parts, sliding past one another. Sounds slightly complicated, but really what we're just talking about, for instance, are scissors with the two blades passing past one another. Or, for instance, uh, a guillotine, like a paper guillotine. This uh, this GIF is very satisfying. This is actually what they do for newspapers and for money. There we go, to, uh, to cut off the uh, bleed area on the outside. And um, also things we're talking things like a lathe, right? So we've got this uh, machine head part, very sharp thing, which is uh, taking off material. So this is our shearing force. Now, this might seem a little odd, a little obscure, but actually I think it really helps us solidify it in our minds. So the same words that we have are actually used for uh, in, in geography to describe tectonic movements, right? Tectonic plates. So we have compressional strength that causes mountains, and then we have tensional stress and shearing stress where the plates are moving apart or past one another. And this is what cause, uh, causes earthquakes and tsunamis. Now we're going to discuss bending, which can get a little confusing, um, but it is a type of shearing force because we have two parts that are trying to move past one another, except in this case, they're actually not, right? So they're not cutting past one another. They're, they want to move, but they're actually just uh, bending the material. So, for instance, we have wooden lintels or shelves, right? We probably all have a shelf at home where it's starting to bow under the weight of books, for instance. Uh, we also can shape metal sheet this way, of course. We have a press break at schools is what we do. And girders, okay? So, um, the uh, where they're actually trying to hold up the weight um, of the road, you know, they, they want to be moving down, they, of course, with gravity, right? So we have that shearing force uh, between the pylons and the girders. So now let's look, take a look at torsion or torsional stress, which are rotary forces. And people tend to get tension and torsion confused. So just remember that we have the R for rotary in torsion, so torsion rotary. So this is the force uh, which is a, um, in rotating different parts in opposite directions. So for instance, pre plane propellers, axle shafts and engines, and car lug nuts. So to explain torsion a little better, here is a torsion testing facility where actually they're trying to improve the Formula One car uh, um, axles right, that run between the, the front and the rear um, wheels. And they're comparing uh, very lightweight metals and carbon fiber. Very cool. And now it's your turn to work out which of the forces um, apply to each of these pictures. So I'd like you to pause the video and we'll go through the answers in a minute. Great, so let's go through the answers. So first of all, we have a boat propeller. So that should be a fairly easy one. That's going to be torsional stress or torsional forces. Now we have a child on a rocking horse. So we've got a lot of the force going through the legs of the horse. So that's going to be compressive force. Over here, we have someone, of course, bending some uh, some metal material. So that's going to be bending. But of course, that is categorized as a shearing force. Down here, we have a die cutter. So anything that's going to be cutting past, uh, trying to move past two surfaces, is going to be shearing force or shear. And then last we have this young lady on a swing. So there's a lot of tension in the chains and there's also a bending force in the seat. Now materials might not be able to actually resist the forces acting on them and therefore they might need enhancing or improving. So they can be reinforced, which basically just means strengthening them, 
or they can be stiffened, which means making them much more rigid, like this fainting goat. He's fine, by the way. So lamination is our first way to create a composite, so layers are built up. This increases strength and rigidity, or stiffness. So we can do this with paper, for instance. If we encapsulate it inside one of these plastic sheets, so it's got plastic on either side, then it passes through this uh, heated roller in a laminator, just here, and then it comes out the other side, and then of course the plastic makes it much more rigid. We also can do this with woods and boards. So with manufactured boards, we, we want to make plywood, we lay the grain at 90 degrees um, in each direction, and then we build the layers up that way, and that gives it uh, much greater rigidity. And a really lovely example of this is in the 1930s was the uh, one of the first plywood chairs that was made. These are pretty commonplace nowadays because this is nearly 100 years later, but at the time it was revolutionary. So I wanted to find a video for you which shows uh, laminating really well so and the steam bending process that's involved. Um, there are hundreds on YouTube. I found this one. I'd like you to watch just the first minute or so, although obviously you're welcome to uh, jump through different parts of the video because there's lots of different processes. Very cool. Now, some of the best ways for reinforcing fabrics is by interfacing and weathering. So we can add layers to fabrics by weaving them together, or we can iron on stiffeners to give them greater functionality to resist tensional forces. So this is what um, iron-on uh, interfacing looks like. It's got these little glue dots, very clever, on the other side, so we iron it on. And it's used universally for things like shirt collars. So if you wear a school shirt to school, you are utilising interfacing. And we can also do it with webbing. So they're the woven together many, many times, which gives it much greater strength and rigidity for things like belts, but also, of course, seat belts and strapping. So, um, you know, cars and uh, cargo transported all over the world just by the use of these uh, ratchets um, connected to fabric straps. Now, we can also enhance by bending. And by that we mean, for instance, the middle of a fluted sheet of corrugated board. Because that reinforces and stiffens it, giving it increased rigidity and strength against compression. This one's actually got multiple layers on it. So um, these are slightly less common, but for really big boxes, perhaps you will actually see this kind of corrugated board. And here's a nice example. So we're actually, it's full of paint cans. It's amazing how much weight it can actually hold up. But also, and I'm going to show you a video in just a second, of course, you can make so much from corrugated board. And one of the best examples I have is this video for you uh, of box wars, which happens every year in Australia, and people construct all sorts of uh, weaponry. And uh, it's very, very fun. Make sure you give that one a watch. So now I'd like you to work out for the following pictures. What do you think is going to be the given enhancement. So pause the video and we'll go through the answers in just a second. Okay, so have you done some thinking? Let's go through. So the first one we have here, of course, are uh, our straps for a backpack. So that's going to be webbing. Next, we have foam core board right here, which is used for things like architectural models. And that is an example of lamination. Uh, down here, so we have a bag which is holding its shape. Of course, it's fabric, so it's going to be one of two things. And to make the handles much more strong, we are going to use interfacing. And then lastly, we have this box down here. And this is actually utilising a couple of different enhancements. The first is lamination, because this is a duplex board and also by bending it. Of course, we're making something that would either be very floppy and not movable into something rigid. So in summary, we've learned today the four basic forces of compression, tension, shear and torsion. And we've considered how to improve materials by reinforcing and stiffening, such as laminating, interfacing, webbing and bending. Well done, guys, and I'll catch you in class. Bye.